It's Friday night, and uh, it's story night. Yeah. Uh, interesting story if you're just tuning in. Yeah, it's, it's about the time I got popped in a rider rental truck out on Interstate 39 and was uh, assumed to be one of the Texas 7 a couple years ago, and they were escaped and on the loose. And I do believe I left off where I was sitting in, in the squad car and things were starting to wind down, and they found out, you know, okay. I told them, you know, when they asked me how many people in the other shift, you know, 7, you know, okay, blah, blah, blah. And uh, finally, things started to wind down, and, and the little ATF guy, he comes walking over, and he says, okay, he says, you know, we're pretty sure, you know, everything's everything's under control. Don't worry about it. Thank you for being cooperative, but we can't turn you loose. We can't do anything until the infrared camera gets here. And I'm like, infrared camera? And he goes, yeah. He says, nobody's going near that truck until they scope it out with an infrared. No. So I'm sitting here, and I'm... I'm talking to the police officer they're actually talking to me and stuff now you know things that they're, they're they're pretty positive but they got to go through the motions they got to do this you know these guys yeah. are killers they can't it's not like oh yeah we don't think you did it and burp, turn me loose no this was this was serious very very serious business okay and uh, uh they they go back over and pretty soon this jeep comes in and uh they get the camera out and they put it on a tripod so it looked like a like a movie camera like a television camera and stuff and and they pointed at the truck and they're doing their thing and i'm sitting in the squad car watching all this go on and they still got the <laughs> sirens and stuff going and all the lights and the dogs barking and all this yeah stuff. Well, and why like, can't they turn the sirens off i mean i i, I don't know it's yeah. an adrenaline thing i think i don't yeah. know they, they were the they were definitely pumped with adrenaline so was i but uh finally they scan the truck and uh they come over and you know, it's clear, and all of a sudden you see a couple of them, and they go out there very, very cautiously, pick the keys up, and when they unlocked the back door of that truck, I mean, they were, the, I mean, you could hear the, the hammers being pulled back on the guns. I mean, they were they were still serious about it, and they unlocked the back of that truck, and they opened it up, and the officer that was standing next to me says, okay, they're going to turn the dogs loose, and I had left the cab door of the truck open, and I looked at him, I said, I didn't finish my cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "No, that dog gonna eat my cheeseburger." No, no. Yeah. Cop looks at me, and goes, "You got food in there? It's gone." <laughs> it was. No. Oh yeah, it sent the dogs in. A couple of them in the back. One of them went right in the cab. Oh no. Oh yeah. No, I was wondering what happened if you finished your cheeseburger. No, I didn't. Oh, There's a big German Shepherd finished my cheeseburger. Oh man. But that was okay. <laughs> you know, was oh. for the circumstances I was in, you, you know. You couldn't really argue, I no, guess. No, <laughs> was, there was no point. And, and when I tell this story to people, when I tell the story, it's, well, I would have done this and I would have done that and I would have said this. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't have. No. You know. Yeah. You would have been dead. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, they, they run the dogs through and uh, they come out and then finally everything's winding down and, and they come over. And because I was sitting there goofing around with uh, the now two policemen that were standing outside the, the truck, you know, and, and I'm, I was, now I could be a clown. I could be myself, you know, right. things are winding down. So I was, you know, not really giving them a hard time, but joking around with them, goofing with them and stuff. And because uh, to me, this was just an unbelievable experience. You know, I knew yeah. I was clean. I knew it was going home. Yeah. I knew it was going to take a while yeah. before I was going home, but <laughs> this was cool, you know. What an experience. That so uh, they come, they come back around. And the ATF guy comes around, and, and they're standing there talking, and they, they look in the window, and then they look at each other and say, well, you sure there's nothing uh, with this guy? I mean, should we turn him loose, or is there something? Well, I don't know. You know, he no. looks like a criminal. Yeah, they started messing with me then, because I've been messing with them no. <laughs> for the last 10 minutes, and I started messing with me. I'm like, all right, guys, this is not funny anymore. No <laughs> 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 they, they, they opened the door, you know. And uh, I was, I was, you know, towards the end, I was, I was being a clown and having fun, and they, they were actually smiling and laughing a little bit, you know, once the tension eased. But there for a while, they were serious, and I mean, I mean, dead serious. <laughs> so, anyway, they, they start clowning around with me. You sure? And then, uh, and the, the deputy sheriff, I believe, is Woodford County. He leans in the window, and he goes, "Haven't I arrested you before?" No. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, really? He says, "You sure?" No, and. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> they get me out of the car, and they're taking the handcuffs off. And I'm looking around, I'm looking around, and the ATF guy says, no, there's no television cameras, you're not on cops. And I'm like, wow, that's too bad, this was a good one. I mean, yeah. Yeah, they had a chopper in there, it all works. 
So I started chit-chatting with the uh, the county officer there, and I'm, I'm looking around at all the squad cars and stuff, and he goes, oh, yeah. He says, you've got 24 units here. That's not including the ones that have shut down the interstate. And I'm like, whoa. Wow. I'm like, you guys were serious. He goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, we were we were very, very serious. And then they, they you know, they talked to me a little bit. And, uh, you know, they're doing all the psychological stuff. You know, you were in a very, very, very stressful situation. Uh, we very much appreciate you being so cooperative. And I'm thinking to myself, like, uncooperative was not even in the equation. No. Uncooperative no. equals dead. <laughs> yeah. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Matter of fact, I'd like to thank the guy that didn't shoot me in the head when I got that cramp in my leg. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, uh, he could have. Yeah. Uh, so we, uh, we, they give me all my stuff back, you know, and I'm, I'm looking except around. Except for the cheeseburger. Except for the cheeseburger. <laughs> I'm looking around and, uh, I'm like, oh, okay, this, you know, this is cool. And I talked to him a little bit more and they're like, you know, you were, this, this was an experience for you, you know, you all right and everything. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. You know, this, I'm thinking in my mind right now, I need a Bud Light. I yeah. need one like real quick. <laughs> <laughs> So all of a sudden, uh, everything's said and done, and, and I'm walking back to the truck. You know, the interstate's still shut down. I'm walking back, you know, do-do-do. I'm like, whoa, what a rush. I get in the cab of the truck. Yep, nothing there but empty wrappers. <laughs> no French fries, no cheeseburger, milkshake spilled over. Yeah. <laughs> and like, wow. <laughs> I fire the truck up. I start to take off. I reach for my cell phone. And uh, my partner, Opie, that worked with us, he had driven yeah. down there in his personal truck. Well, he was hung up in traffic back 71. They shut it off at 71 back there on the other side of the bridge. Oh, wow. That uh, was where they shut down the interstate. And he was held up in traffic there. Well, he couldn't see down the hill. All he could see was this bright glow of lights down there. <laughs> yeah. And so these people are all hung up in traffic. And finally, people are getting out and mingling around, getting out of their vehicles, because this, this took a while, like yeah. an hour and a half or so. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> He's, he said he was sitting in his truck, and a uh, guy comes walking by, and Opie asked him, he says, what's going on up there? And he says, well, his trucker up here on his radio said that the police have gotten uh, a rental truck with the Texas 7 in it. <laughs> and Opie goes, that's Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was good. But, but I mean, uh, absolutely no disrespect. Whatever. They were absolutely professional. They were serious. They could have hurt me bad, and yeah. they didn't. I mean, they, they, they were very serious. It was a very stressful situation for them also. Now, you told me that they were following you or they knew of the truck right since uh, you left the hotel during the conversation once i got out of the car uh, that was one of the things i said what can i ask you know what's going on and they said they had a tip that came out of a restaurant indicator that the uh, people that matched the description of the texas 7 were in that restaurant and at that particular time they Which were thought the to have had a uh, rental truck that they were traveling in Oh, man. And so they were actually planning all this from when we had the trucks parked in the parking lot of the motel down in Decatur. So your first yeah. shift was being accused of being... Well, yeah, and they should be. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they should, they should Does that include Phil, too? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. So anyway, I, I get in the truck and I drive away. And, and yeah, uh, actually, Dave Bentley was driving the other truck. And he was on the other shift. They got him nowhere near as bad, but they got him in the gas station. He stopped put gas in the truck because he left a lot later than I did. Yeah. Well, a little later than I did. And uh, they come flying in the gas station. He said there was only about 10 of them, but there was an FBI. He says, all he knows, he's he's standing there putting diesel fuel in the truck, and all of a sudden all these cars come flying up. Next thing he knows, there's this guy in a suit, got a gun in his nose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dave just filling the truck like, what? <laughs> I'm paying for it. I'm yeah. paying for it. <laughs> but uh, my incident was already underway, and so uh, he only, yeah, he had like 10 or so, but they, they opened the, the door and looked in the truck and stuff down there with him. But uh, so I, I drive away, and like I said, as I reach for the cell phone, it was Opie goes, dude, dude, was that you? Was that you? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll meet you at the shop. We're heading for Ottawa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. But, uh, yeah, there's there's still a little more of this, a little more of this to come. Right now, uh, we've had a, uh, several callers. We've got some requests we're going to take care of. So we'll be back in a few right here in the Graybeard Biker Show. And we are back live. Graybeard Biker Show, story night, Texas 7. Yes, yeah, old wizard. 
was mistaken for one of the Texas Seven. I could see that. I could understand that. Kind of how how, how old was your heartbeat? Actually, not too bad. Because after after working a full week uh, with this outfit, doing what we did down yeah. here, I was like, it's just. I just wanted to get home. It, it was just, it was an adrenaline. Uh, oh, don't yeah. get me wrong. You know, my adrenaline was flying, and and so were there. So were all the police officers. I, I, you know, you could see it. I mean, this was, you know, this was serious business. But uh, where I left off, yeah, I, I was in the truck. I'm heading back to the shop, and I get into Ottawa, and I and I pull pull in back around and get back into the shop. And of course, by this time, Opie is right on the back of the truck. Yeah. I climb out of the cab, and Opie jumps out and he goes, "Dude, dude, was that you? Was that you?" And I'm like. Yeah, man. Hey, I just told you on the phone. He's like, oh, man. I held my hands out in the headlights of the truck. You can see all the marks from the handcuffs. He goes, oh, man, dude. And I'm <laughs> like, it was a rush, man. I mean, it was, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I had, like, I had the, the front seat, you know. It was, it was like experiencing what that would be like without having to be locked up. You got to go home afterwards. You yeah, know? That, it was like that's one of these one reality experience. things. Yeah. And that's exactly what it was. And uh, so anyway... Needless to say, the adrenaline is is uh, still flowing pretty good, and I'm thinking I need I need a Bud Light real bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could use one. I park the truck, lock it up, and uh, I head uh, to the nearest package good deal, and away I go. And I stopped and had a few on the way home, and uh, I get close to Jello Chick's house. You know, I I by now had several, and. Yeah. Uh, didn't take into consideration that I had called this woman when I left the motel and said, I will be back. You know, I'm on my way. She knew exactly how long it took. <laughs> Which is about, uh, uh, you know, two hours, two 45 hours. minutes, you know, close to three hours, depending on the traffic. And, and we are now at? I am now approaching five and a half, six hours. <laughs> Ooh. Little difference, man. A little bit of difference. And so, uh, you know, I come cruising in the door yeah. with... Uh, the remainder of my package goods yeah and she looks at me like you know because now it's kind of late at night you know i woke her up Ooh. and uh I, she she looks at me i said honey you ain't gonna believe this really <laughs> said, you're, not, you're not gonna believe this i start telling her you, you know i was texas seven and all the guns pointed at me I almost got killed and and all this stuff <laughs> she, she gives me that look like Oh my god You've come up with some whoppers before dude Yeah This one I could have told her I was abducted by aliens And just <laughs> Just got back from the mothership And she'd have probably believed that more And I'm like No seriously Seriously this really happened I'm kidding you <laughs> Wasn't buying it a bit and I'm like Oh well I'll explain it in the morning again but, Yeah uh, Come to find out You know when Opie come over The next morning and stuff And he goes Did he tell you about it Did he tell you about it Couldn't believe it She's like you mean that actually happened to you? <laughs> How many times in my life have I told you I was a victim of circumstance? <laughs> now I am definitely a victim of circumstance. The plot comes through. Yeah. So now she's sick of hearing the story. But <laughs> now, what did the cops did? They explained a little bit about how they did that exactly. Yeah. When uh, when we were down on the scene, well, actually, uh, the next day, the following day, uh, I stayed with her, and then I went out out to my house. It was Sunday. And I get in her phone rings, and I pick up the phone. And uh, uh, Mr. Wade, this is Officer, you know, such and so, state, you know, state police, blah blah blah. And you know, ask how I was doing. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> you know, how you doing? He says, I'm doing good. <laughs> and I'm like, he, he says, uh, we would, you know, once again apologize for the incident uh, last night. He said, uh, you, you know, once again, you were in a very, very high stressful situation that we put you through and we'd like to thank you once again for your cooperation blah 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 blah. and that's when i told him i'm loose now i'm like you know once again like you know being un uncooperative what would that have got me and he, you yeah. know dead yeah exactly <laughs> but uh and i said we need a little more information you know on the truck and blah 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 because blah, we we turned you loose once you know once we sorted things out enough we turned you loose we need a little more information so i i talked with him for a while i sat down and like so how how did this all come about? I need to know the story of how this all come about. And he goes, sure, no problem. He said, uh, there were, when your other shift had went into this restaurant to <laughs> eat, and I'm like, say no more. You know, they're probably throwing food. They're rowdy. They were dirty. And, yeah, there was a couple of them that did resemble a couple of the escapees in Texas 7. No. And uh, knowing these crews that I worked with, 
at this particular job, yeah, most of them probably were yeah. criminals. But yeah. <laughs> or just got out. <laughs> but uh, there, at that particular time, uh, through the you know the 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 police blotters and stuff, I guess you would call it, uh, were rumored that they were traveling in a rental vehicle, rental truck, and they were in the Illinois area. And uh, because of the other shift, there'd be a seven on them, and they're seven of them. They're dirty, and they're rowdy because they're going home. The job's done, and they were in this particular restaurant, and it somebody picked up the phone and said, "We may have your boys here," and they got to take it. They got to take it seriously. The oh, descriptions yeah. all went through. I mean, they did all the descriptions, the whole works, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they were actually watching us when the trucks were still sitting at the motel. They were watching me come out of the motel and throw my gear in the cab of the truck and leave. And wow. he said. To set this whole thing up, he says, you would not believe it. And he says, by the way, I was the first officer. I'm the one that got behind you right in El Paso. I was the one to come up alongside you and got right back. And he says, my job was the shield between the back door of your truck and everybody else. He said, that's where I had to stay. He says, you talk about an adrenaline rush. I stared at the back door of that truck, wondering if there's seven men in there that will kill me in a heartbeat for 39 miles. And I'm wow. like... So, uh, did you have a cold one after that was all over? And he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, so, so how did this work? He said, the radios were just insane. He said, you had three districts, which is why I was sitting in a Woodford County police car, which is East Peoria, yeah, just north of East Peoria. And I'm in LaSalle, Peru, but they had, uh, yeah, the SWAT, and they had to get the, the IBI Illinois Bureau of Inve- Investigations and FBI and and uh, not the SWAT but the ATF guys right and uh, all the dogs the whole works all the all the specialists in this field and they had to set this stop up at the perfect place uh, at the perfect time the whole works because it was a full felony intent to kill stop wow <laughs> I'm like whoa that's pretty <laughs> cool this is a little me a little wizard victim of circumstance. <laughs> uh, I tell Jello check that all the time she just rolls her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it was it was pretty cool, and uh, of course everybody's going, oh, you know, I'm not so much. Like, yeah, no, I don't think so, man. They were they could have killed me in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, and uh, they didn't. You know, I mean, it was, was especially it was when I got to cramp my leg. I thought that was it. I thought that was it. I got to cramp my leg. <laughs> I'm gonna get my head splattered all over the yeah. interstate. But they, like I said, they were professional enough that you know that they they weren't trigger happy they weren't nothing they could have they could have been very very mm-hmm. uh, a lot worse i should say than they were with me yeah and i would have been <laughs> if i was in their <laughs> shoes man i wouldn't <laughs> took any chances there's seven <laughs> guys in there armed to the gills no <laughs> but uh yeah it that's was quite a, a quite an experience I mean, one i'll never forget 24 units 24 units not including the ones that were shutting down the interstates and they shut down interstate 39 at interstate 80 and at route 71 Wow. Yeah. Uh, all for me. Sure. This is one of my autographs. 50, I'm famous, yeah. dude. 15 minutes of fame, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. What I'd like, if, if if there's one of the officers, LaSalle County, any police officer that was involved in that incident a couple years ago, if you're listening right now, give me a call here at the studio at 815-538-ROCK, 538-ROLL. It's 815-538-7625 or 7655. If you're one of the officers that was involved in that or knows about it, give me a call here in the studio. I want to I talk to you. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in a few, see if we get some calls.